Good morning. Uh, my name is Flavia Caballero. I'm a third-year resident of ophthalmology in my country. I live in Bolivia. Uh, for those who don't know me, <laughs> I've been here just for more than a month. I'll be staying here just two more weeks. I came for uh, do an observership in the Virgin of Phoenix, and it's good to know. <laughs> it's good to know the people that I haven't met yet. Well, uh, they wanted me to speak a little bit about uh, what is going on with the eye hospital in my city and with the residency in my city. I would like to apologize me for my English mistakes because my English is not as good as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> having this trouble. Um, well, for those who don't know, uh, my country is in South America. It's just the heart of South America. Uh, we, the name is Bolivia, but now uh, the name has been changed. It's officially known as the plurinational state of Bolivia. It's a landlocked country located in the central South America. It's a, it's a democratic republic, and that is divided into nine departments. Its geography is, bar uh, is barred from the peaks of the Andes in the west, which we took <laughs> Dr. Mitch and Dr. Duffin, to the eastern lowlands, uh, uh, and it's si uh, situated between the Amazon basin. It is a developing country. Its main economic activities are agriculture, forestry, fishing, mining and manufacturing goods such as textile, clothing, refined metals, and refined petroleum. Uh, we have an estimated population of 10 million people, uh, we, which is really multi-ethnic. The main language spoken is Spanish. Also, I didn't even <laughs> know that we have 34 other indigenous languages that are, that are official, which I didn't know. <laughs> The geography, Bolivia has a huge degree of biodiversity. It's considered one of the greatest in the world, as well as several ecoregions with such ecological subunits as the Altiplano. We have, we have jungle, we have uh, tropical rainforest, we have desert, we have desert, we have everything. Uh, it's divided into three physiographic regions, the Andean region in which I live in, is located above 3,000 meters of altitude with some of the highest spots in the Americas, such as the Sahama, which is for you, uh, I don't know, meters for you is not that important, but <laughs> it is like <laughs> 21,453 feet, and the Illimani, which is like 21,200 feet. Uh, for example, we have a picture there of Dr. Duffin and Dr. Missing when we took them to the Sahama. We live really high. <laughs> uh, we have the Subandian region and we have the Llanos, which is located uh, below 1,312 uh, 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 feet meters above sea level. Here we have some pictures of the country, the division into the nine departments. We have a lot of mountains and we have uh, a lot of uh, this, the, this one is a picture of the languages that we speak in our country. La Paz is the city I live in. Yeah, its original name is Nuestra Señora de la Paz. It's the seat go of the government of Bolivia. It's located in the western part of the country, in the department of the same name. It's an, uh, the elevation of the city is uh, roughly between uh, 11,975 feet and the city is built on the hills. We basically live in the hills above sea level. Uh, it, is a w it is the world's highest de facto capital city. The city is sits in a bow surrounded by the high mountains of the Altiplano. Uh, it's counted in the hills and it has a lot of variety in elevations from 10,500 to 3,500 feet it depends on where exactly are you standing on the hill. We have a picture here of our city. I think it's really beautiful. The mountain you see in the back is the Illimani. It, it, the mountains are always covered in the snow, but it doesn't snow in my city. I don't know why. Uh, we have uh, some other pictures. Our city is in the mountains. Um, 
And if you see the orange arrow, it's exactly where I live in the city. <laughs> <laughs> I live kind of in the middle. <laughs> we do have you a don't kitchen. Have trouble breathing more now. No, no, I, no, I keep saying that I have too much oxygen here. <laughs> <laughs> but we can breathe there, we can. Yeah, <laughs> we can. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we have, well, I wanted to give a little bit of history of what uh, happens with the eye banks, with the eye hospitals in my country. In 1920, uh, uh, Dr. Landa Lyon, uh, he opened ophthalmology courses in clinic at the School of Medicine in La Paz. Uh, the eye hospital named Said in the city of La Paz in 1939 becomes the first eye hospital in Bolivia and in South America. Dr. Luis Landa uh, was the first director and founder of in the Bolivian state and he was awarded with the Condor de los Andes, which is a great award in my country for that contribution. In 1950, uh, Dr. Aniceto Solares creates uh, the Bolivian Society of Prevention of Blindness and in 1957 uh, is created the Bolivian Institute of Blindness. <sighs> but what are the ophthalmological disorders in Bolivian Andes? Actually, in Bolivia, 78% of our inhabitants live above 2,551 feet, and 50% live above 11,481 feet, so we will live really up high. Um, the average is about uh, 12,467 feet. The air is thin and clear with low humidity and allows for more sunlight of the solar spectrum. That's why instead, uh, instead the heat diffusion is really low. So people are burning in the sun and in the shade they freeze. That's why these factors, in addition to a racial influence, uh, the skin color of the people, that's why we call ourselves the bronze race is because of the color of our skin. But what is a when we have to talk about pathology of the eye, we have predisposing factors of pathology in the eye because we have a higher level of solar radiation, infrared visible, ultraviolet, and cosmic radiation. We have a lot of eye exposure to the environment directly. We have ex exposure to the, uh, of the eye to hyperbaric hypoxia and acute and chronic and nutrition at altitude because we have uh, a lot of the malnutrition in my country. Uh, the, the ophthalmological disorders in height that we have found that are more common are metropia with 40% of the people living in the highlands need glasses, often for myopia, astigmatism, and presbyopia. Conjunctivitis pigmentosa with high incidence of proliferation, reaching almost 90% of our children they have this uh, terrible conjunctivitis and they are always screwing their, eye, their eyes. So, so what, would you, what would you call that? Like is it, is it traditionally called cultural art or is it something I've never seen in this country? Yeah, before? I have never but seen it here. It's either a, a Portuguese wise exposure. Yeah, that's a variation on color care popular. We yeah. have all that about it. Yeah. And it is only color care corneal cancer is less than the traditional view. Yeah. And you combine that with hereditary cancer is so common if you live in the eye bubble for some reason. I, I do have a lot of <laughs> allergies. Uh, it's a more than pigmentation, it's proliferation. We have in Greculas. Yeah. Yeah, we treat them with. It's the only way it, it helps because otherwise it continues <laughs> and it's worse and it's basically there are kids so we have to trust the parents. So and the yeah. We have pinguecula, we have heurician and we even have them in children from three to seven years, of course in young and in adult. Uh, we have cataracts with high incidence and prevalence and we have macular degeneration. Which are the most, uh, we have to know what are the biggest causes of blindness in Bolivia. We have accidents and trauma as the first one. And it is because our workers do not have, uh, they do not care much about the way they work. They just want to make some money. So they do not protect themselves as much as we would like to. We have infectious diseases. We have uh, congenital disorders cataract, retinal detachment, glaucoma, and we have uh, some people that 
is done, but we don't know why exactly. Well, the hospital I work in is named Instituto Nacional de Ophthalmología. It's the, it's the first one that has been uh, created in the country. It has now 39 years, and it's divided into triage. We basically try to do the same thing as you do here. We have subspecialties as retinal glaucoma, culoplastic, pediatrics, and strabismus, <coughs> anterior segment, coronary and refractive surgery. We have the Department of Community Services and the Department of Low Vision, low vision which is really new and it's just starting. We count with a clinical laboratory, pharmacy, cardiologist, a surgical area. We have a future hospital in Pan. And we do have patient hospitalization rooms. We admit the patients so they can stay in the hospital. We uh, uh, here are the address for the <laughs> uh, website of our hospital. I've been reading all about it, and the mission of my hospital is to provide qualified eye care committed to promote, improve, and rehabilitate the visual health in our population. And the vision of my hospital is to be an integrated hospital to the community that can resolve all the problems with the highest ophthalmology uh, technology that we can find. Here is a picture I have found of the people that work in my, in my hospital. If you see in the center, and now is the current director of my hospital, Dr. Joel Moya. The residency, we have residency of ophthalmology in my country in three cities in the country, in three departments. We have it in La Paz, in Cochabamba, and in Santa Cruz. Uh, in La Paz, for what I know, it's been like 35 years of ophthalmology residency. We have formed almost 75 uh, ophthalmology specialists in the country. In, in the in the city, it ca it takes three years to be an ophthalmology spe specialist. Uh, we have now three residents um, in the first year, four residents in the second year, and two residents in the third year. It varies because it depends basically on the government. Uh, they decide when they want two, when they want three, or when they want four residents in the specialty. Uh, only three of the nine residents receive some kind of payment. The other, uh, the other ones, uh, they do not. So you pay less than the government. Yeah, the payment it comes from the government. We all have to do it now. We, ha in the past, they had to go three months to a rural area to do some community work. Now it's a year, and. Now, I even heard that they're planning to make it three years for every single medical specialty in the country. For example, if traumatology takes four years, you have to go four years to a rural area to do some kind of work. Now, this is what is new for us, it's even new for me. I just <laughs> found out that. I don't know how it's gonna, hopefully it won't be a proven to us. <laughs> uh, we do not have fellowship programs available in my country. We are divided by models. <laughs> Residents of the first years do mo mostly optics and refraction. We do optics and refraction. <laughs> and residents of the second and third year, we are divided by a specialty clinic in ophthalmology. We have uh, session bibliographic se sessions, clinical cases, review articles, and presentations of research. We also do research ourselves. According to agreement side with the university, because we are part of the university, uh, we have a, a research, a methodology research course for uh, our residents of the first year. We do research, we, it has to be prospective. We have to follow some guidelines in the, in the city. First year, we do assist to the patients. We do take care of the patients, we see patients, even do by ourselves. The first, the first year residents, they take care of the general ophthalmology patients. The second year and the third year, we take care of the subspecialties. And the residents, we cover the emergency service 24 hours and 30 uh, in all year long. And we do have to stay at the hospital. We cannot be on call. Do you have any questions? I know you do. So, so when, do you get, when do you get certification? Do you just start at, at the beginning? At the beginning, the from day number one. Do you get certification 
Yeah, we have a lot of work there. So uh, day number one, if it happens that to be that you're with a, uh, with a surgeon and he's in surgery, you just have to go there and help him. Do they turn a lot of surgery over to residents who or are they pretty humanely watched? Not as much as we would like, but it's getting better. <laughs> so g give me an idea, having done a lot of programs at Tufts, I mean, and by the time you finish, how many cataracts do you think you really have a typical resident in Tufts Elementary School? Probably, it depends. Uh, it depends on the resident, because when you want to do surgery, you can ask for more surgery. You don't have, for example, you have to do 100 cataracts in order to be a specialist. We do not have that. So if you do want to be a surgeon, you can look for yourself to do more <coughs> surgery. You can ask your professors to do it. For example, uh, so far I have done 40 cataract surgeries, but because I want to. I have some friends that they don't want to, that they can, they will say, okay, I want to learn, but it's not something I want to do. I want to be more like a general ophthalmologist, not a surgeon. So it varies. So if, if you wanted to do more health related things on your ID, are there opportunities to train outside of the country, or do you find doctors, former doctors, and people in the country to do your partnership? Mm, we do not have, I think, a, a cornea specialist as cornea okay. in my hospital at least. But we can find somewhere, f some other places to go and do it. Uh, so basically, it yeah, because uh, for example, I ha I've chose the United States. By m my friends, they they go to Mexico, and they go to Peru. The they those are the and Puerto Rico. The, the three countries they chose to go, but I, I the only one had was just the United States. I noticed that you didn't have many ophthalmology residents at your hospital. We do not have. We do not have the specialty of neural ophthalmology in the hospital, and I, I don't think that even in the whole country. Yeah, it's something that is really missing. I have a friend that he really wants to do a fellowship in neural ophthalmology. It, where we have to go outside. We cannot do it inside the hospital. Thank you.